I'm Jill Gillardi and you're watching the third season of Building the Ozarks. We're here to meet custom home builder Rusty McLaughlin. Hey there, Rusty. Hi, Jill. How are you? I am good. So come with us. We want to take you on a tour of this amazing house. How much better can it get than being able to cruise up in your very own boat to your very own dream home? Well, this dream home can be yours and we're going to show you everything from an amazing multi-million dollar view to 21st century technology. We have surprises on the outside and the inside of this home, and it gets even better than that. This is not just a vacation home for the summer. We'll have entertainment here all year round. This dream home is located in Portachima community, otherwise known as Hillside Harbor at Lake of the Ozarks. Step up to the patio area. Over the past year, we've watched a slope lot go from bare ground to a 5,800 square foot dream home. We've seen everything from large cranes to custom-made cabinets at the home site. And we've shown you how those contractors and craftsmen have done their jobs from start to finish. It's a project we call Building the Ozarks. Hi, Jill. Good to see you. Good to see you. So we're here at the Dream Home. Yes, we are. This thing is beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. Now, this is your second season doing this project. Yes, it is. And uh, this is a little atypical. You've typically built in the Springfield area. Why did you choose to build at Lake of the Ozarks? At this particular lake, we're able to build right down on the water. And as a builder, a designer of homes, that's just an opportunity I really wanted to jump into. So we're very excited about building here on the Lake of the Ozarks. Is the lake side the front or the back of the house? It's both. Most of the time we call this the back of the house. At this lake, it's called the front of the house. And that's because people come to, to visit you just as you have come from the water. So this is actually the front of the house, although it is the back of the house also. Well, how about we uh, take everyone to the back of the house, which is the street side, and you can take all of us on this tour, and this is going to be really exciting. I look forward to it. Let's go. All right, stay with us. We'd like to take a moment and thank the people that helped make building the Ozarks possible. side of the dream home and you can't miss it we are on a steep lot how steep is this lot rusty well it falls 75 feet from the street to the top of the seawall so that did present some challenges and it slopes right down to some beautiful looking garage doors that look like a stable or something like that it's all part of that old world cottage feel uh, garage doors are a part of society today so we just want to try to make those look as, as good as possible Speaking of that old world look, is that why you chose the stucco and stone? It is, Jill. We're 80% stone and about 20% stucco. Uh, those are materials that were readily available back when they built the old world European homes. So we chose materials that they used back then because they are timeless and it helps us to achieve the look that we're after. I do notice also the roof, that the pitch of it is so extreme compared to any of the other homes. Does that go along with the look too? It does. Again, that lends itself to the same style that we're after. It is a 1612 roof pitch. Uh, roof pitches were, were designed way back in, the, in those days because of the snow. If you were in an area that had a lot of snow, you went with a steeper roof. So to achieve the look, we went with that 1612 roof pitch. Well, I tell you, the view just from the street is outstanding, but I, I guess the, the greatest view is really from the lake. It is. Once we get in the house, the view off the deck and from all the windows that we put on the back of the house, it's just tremendous. And we're going to show everyone out there that lake view. It is outstanding and it may even take your breath away. We are at the front door of the dream home and I tell you what, Rusty, this door is magnificent looking. Well, thank you, Jill. That's part of the reason we chose it. Uh, the front door really makes a statement on a house. This door is not only looks good, but it's a good, thick, heavy door. It's solid walnut. It's thicker than a traditional door. It's got heavy ball bearing hinges. We want that door to feel good and solid so that when people come to visit, when they grab the handle, when they step in, they get a good feel for the house. They feel like the whole house is going to be solid because the front door is. And I like this part here. You know, you have time to perhaps open up your umbrella before going outside in the elements. You bet. Always like to put a covered entry over the front porch of the house or the front door area. 
Uh, we've chosen an arch to mimic the arch on the door. We've also got arched windows on the front of the house. It all ties the house together, helps soften the feel, and gets that look that we're after. And of course, the inside's important as well, so let's step inside and take a look. Sounds great. So here we are in the dream home, and my goodness, the, the amount of space is just unbelievable right now. Well, that's by design. We wanted to, to achieve a feel that when you walk through the front door, the house just spreads out before you. And that's what we accomplished with this. We did that so that it would be a very welcome entrance to the house. So that's why you see the wide open places, you see the tall ceilings, the extra tall doors. We've done those things to, to make this a warm, inviting, welcoming home. Yeah, and the, I mean, you can't miss the lake view as soon as you walk in the door. That's uh, outstanding itself. The lake view jumps out at you, it really does. The other things that I'm noticing are these pillars, too, that are unique looking. Usually I see a smooth looking pillar in homes. This is totally different. Well, these columns are made to look like they're holding up something very heavy. Uh, they're made to look heavy. They're actually a styrofoam type product uh, made to mimic coral. Uh, that's actually where they've got the pattern is coral from the sea. So we wanted to get a column that looks very heavy, very ancient, very old, and looks like it's just holding up the world. But in reality, the way we frame this house, these are just for aesthetic purposes. Yeah, the texture of them looks great. And you've got these walls that are textured too that you can't help but want to just touch it and see how it feels. You bet. We've textured the drywall. We've gone with a rounded bullnose corner. We even have thicker walls in here. That's all to give it an older feel. In fact, the texture allows that when we put the glazing on, that glazing sticks inside the crevices. So it makes a new paint job look old. So really, it's, it's all a part of that taking a new house and making it look old feel. Well, you did a good job doing that. And I tell you what, you know, coming in here, there's so many things you want to see. I know some people want to see the master bedroom. That is uh, one of the uh, hot spots, you could say. The master bedroom really turned out nicely. Let's go take a look. All right. Ooh, wait, before we check out the master bedroom, can we look at this bathroom? Because this is so cute, and I love this vanity in here. Well, sure, this is the guest bathroom. It's just off the entry, but with the door open, you can see it from the entry. So we've chosen a furniture piece to go in here for the vanity. We picked a very nice uh, vanity with a granite top. We've got the mirror, the lights to go together. And we even did more of the glazed paintwork in this bathroom so that this room actually is, is nearly a work of art. It is something that's intended to catch your eye when you walk by. Well, it definitely catches your eye. Uh, what else could catch your eye is this master bedroom that I'm, I'm excited to see. So let's go check it out. Well, sure, let's take a look. Come on. The first thing that I want to do when I step into this master bedroom is take off my shoes. This rug is so cushy. It's a nice thick plush carpet in here. We put a thicker pad, a thicker carpet. Uh, just as we have solid surfaces in the areas that we like, in those areas that, that people just want to lay down on the floor, we want to make sure that we give a good, nice, soft feel to those rooms as well. A very cozy feel on my feet and a very cozy feel in this entire room, especially with this fireplace in a lake home. Why, well, sure. Lake homes aren't just for weekends during the summer months. Uh, a lot of people like to come during the winter, enjoy a nice uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas at the lake. So we put four fireplaces in this house, especially the master bedroom. Uh, we've got a nice, thick, heavy stone mantle. Uh, we've aged it to match the other columns in the house. Uh, it's a gas, gas log fireplace, no mess easy to turn off and on. So yeah, we've, we've decided to put a fireplace in this master bedroom and we think that really adds to the feel of the house. The carpet sets the mood, the fireplace sets the mood in this room. What else sets the mood? We've gone with an indirect ceiling in here, indirect lighting, a recessed ceiling. We go with the crown mold, we step the ceiling up, and we put a rope lighting up in there so that you can turn the other lights off and just have a nice soft glow in this room. Again, it just, it just gives that feel of a nice, warm, welcoming cottage style home. You also got, I see some speakers, so you can what, set some mood music? We've got speakers not only in the bedroom, we've got speakers all through the house, inside and out. Can play any music you want to. We've got a control panel right here in the room. You can change CDs, DVDs, play the radio, whatever you want to. We can play it throughout the house and in each individual room. And it seems like this is the spot where a bed would go and you could just lay here and look at the lake view for as long as you want, right? You bet. We've got nearly wall-to-wall, -wall, floor to ceiling windows on the back wall of this bedroom. And again, that's to capture that view. Uh, if we're going to build a house on the lake, we want to make sure the master bedroom's on the back of the house. We've got the balcony out there that ties into the deck and lots of glass, lots of big view. That's what it's all about. 
Julie, my wife, has done a great job of, of doing the interior design work on this house. She has helped tie every room together so every room flows, yet it has its own feel. This master bedroom and the master bathroom suite, she's done some extra special things in there that really make it a nice, attractive bathroom. Let's go see it. Let's take a look. All right. Jill, we have packed a lot into this master suite. We're, first, we've created a lot of space by giving a tall ceiling. It gives us that volume. We've got the plant shelves up here with the indirect lighting. We've got a, a big iron chandelier in the room. Uh, that complements the fixtures that we have over our vanity. Uh, we've got a framed mirror that matches those fixtures. And on top of that, we've gone with a real marble vanity. It's not the cultured marble, it is a true thick, heavy marble that we put on top of these custom built vanities. Now something we saw in the foyer is also in the master bathroom. We've added columns in here uh, to this bathtub. It's the same material, just a slightly smaller column than what we used in the, van in the uh, foyer. And likewise, these, vanity, these columns don't hold up anything. They're just for looks. Then this is what, a jacuzzi here? That's a Whirlpool tub. It's jetted. Uh, it's a very nice tub. It's a good acrylic finish. Uh, it's a very comfortable tub. Also above the tub, we've gone uh, recessed ceiling up above up there as well with the crown mold and again, the indirect rope lighting. Yeah, I love the changes in the ceiling in the shower room. It's a doorless shower. We've got body sprays, an oversized shower head. We've even got the handheld and the seat built in. As you exit the shower, we also have an area with robe hooks, another seat to stack uh, towels, an area to dry off. It's just a nice extra feature in this shower. We have more rooms to show everyone, and uh, it almost feels like walking back in the foyer like you're in just this one large room. What separates the rooms from each other? Well, we've done it with floor coverings. We've also done that with these nice big arched openings. We wanted the big open spaces so that all the rooms would flow together well. But then again, we've got these rooms that are separately defined, and, and what we have here is the great room. In the great room, it has the rug, and the foyer has the tile, I see. Once again, in the great room, it's an area where maybe I envision uh, the furniture, kids laying on the floor. You want a nice, soft feel once you get into the great room. So we elected to put the uh, carpeting in this room also. I think this is one of your best fireplaces you have in this entire house. We actually used similar products to the columns on the mantel. Uh, we selected a different stone from the rest of the house, just to be different. And we've tapered the fireplace a little bit. We've got the vaulted ceiling with the suspended timbers. We've done some things to uh, create a focal point in this room all on its own, even aside from the view out to, out to the lake. And what else are you going with in this room? I see you've got very high ceilings. Well, we vaulted this ceiling for two reasons. One, we could get more windows that would expose more of the view of the lake and the big timber beams on the deck. And number two, anytime you can vault a ceiling, you just create a feeling of space in that room. So not only are the walls tall here, but we vaulted that ceiling up to give us an extra, an extra big space area. And this just opens right up into the kitchen? It does. It opens directly into the kitchen. And again, that's for entertainment purposes. Uh, we've got another fireplace in the kitchen, but you can also enjoy this fireplace. You can enjoy this unlimited view of the lake with all the windows from both rooms. So we purposely open these two rooms to each other. Is that something that's common in a lake home, to have it very open, or is this something unique? Well, it's something that we tried to, to follow along with. I don't know about other homes, but I know that our idea was when you walk through that front door, we want the house to open up and we want to see as much of the lake as we can as quickly as possible. Well, I think you captured that. Well, thank you. Rusty, I see that uh, you have maybe separating the rooms instead of doorways, just a change in the flooring. We wanted to leave this space as open as possible. But of course, you don't want carpet in the kitchen hearth room area, so we've got the tile in here. Helps define the room, but it's also very, uh, very good functionally for this area. And I also noticed the, the difference in the two tones that you're using. You bet. We've got a, uh, a lighter colored cabinet. We used a, an off-white color. It's got a brown glaze. And then on the island itself, we went with a dark stain and put a black glaze on the island. That's to help that, to uh, differentiate that, make it look like a piece of furniture. I just love how it all ties together. You've got the tile, uh, the granite, every little color, every little piece ties together. Well, sure, that was all planned out. Julie uh, has actually picked uh, the tile, the granite, uh, the stain uh, glazing that goes on the cabinets, all of that is designed to tie together. And when you hit that right, including the glazing on the walls, that's what gives you that feel in a house that, boy, I really like this. You maybe don't know why, but you can say, I really like the feel of this. Something about this feels really nice. 
Now is this an oversized fridge or a normal size fridge? It's a very big refrigerator. It's a built-in unit. It's oversized. It's huge. Uh, we've gone with stainless steel cabinets, double ovens. We've got the warming drawer, a very nice microwave, uh, a gas cooktop that, that any chef would love to have. So we've got the chef's type package in the appliances for this kitchen. And this is not it, you, you have the view too. I'll tell you, when we designed this house, when we stood on the lot, Julie and I talked about this and we said, what do you want to see from the kitchen sink? So we've had